Wouldn't it be great if you could read faster while still remembering everything you read? Just open a book, zoom through it, and you've remembered absolutely everything. If you have exams around the corner and you have a lot of reading material still untouched, or if you love reading but just don't have enough time to read, hit that subscribe button as that's exactly what I'll be diving into today as I look at how I speed read. Now, last year, I read over 200 books, and that was while running a few businesses and working full time. And a huge reason for this was just being able to read really fast. If you currently feel that you're an average speed reader, I promise you that by the end of this video, using the three techniques, you'll be able to at least triple your reading speed with just a few minutes of practice. Now, speed reading is basically the ability to quickly recognize and take in phrases or sentences on a line or page all at once. With speed reading, you'll be able to manage your work and time better by dramatically increasing your words per minute and improving or maintaining your comprehension level. Having read loads and loads of business books and textbooks, a lot of the content is actually often fluff and padding with many books feeling like they could have been blog posts. So our focus is on getting to the core of the information as quickly as possible. A 250 word piece of text is read through in one minute by the average reader and effective speed readers can finish the same text in half that time or less, meaning you get your time back and stay productive. Now, I won't use these techniques for fiction books or anything that I'm reading for enjoyment, but for everything else like exams or business, I'll use these three techniques to save loads and loads of time while pulling out the key points of information. I've broken down how I speed read into three key steps. The first is to train your brain to speed read, the second is to train your focus and attention, and the third is to train your eyes. And that's what I'm going to be going through today. So let's jump straight in with the first part, which is training your brain to become a speed reader. So what I suggest doing first is grabbing a book that you perhaps haven't read before, as if you've read it, that's kind of cheating, and using the book to practice. You might also want to check out a free online tool like Spreeder, where you can adjust the speed that text shows up on screen to practice. Once you've done that, you can start to practice some of the techniques that I'm diving into. If you try reading your book right now, you might notice that your brain is pronouncing each word in your head as you read. This is something known as sub-vocalization. One thing all speed reading strategies have in common is that they train your brain to avoid sub-vocalization by avoiding pronouncing and hearing each word in your head as you read it. I'm starting off with training your brain to speed read as this is often the hard bit where most people get stuck as we're so used to trying to comprehend and understand every single word on every single page that we read. So we say it out loud in our head. You need to make a mindset shift that to speed read through textbooks or business books, you're taking on the role of a gold miner or a magpie looking over water or fields for gold nuggets of information that sparkle and we want to pick up, and we want to ignore everything else. We naturally feel like we should read every single word to aid our understanding, but in fact lots of those words are filler, and our brains need to be rewired to skim over lines or groups of words and allow keywords to jump out at us. Just like gold will sparkle in between dirt and rocks, Key information is often surrounded by unnecessary conjunctions, adjectives, and nouns that we just don't need. This all means getting comfortable with potentially missing some things and not comprehending every single thing you read. As your speed reading gets better, your comprehension will also improve too. But at the beginning, this might be much lower and you need to get comfortable with going for speed over perfection initially. The second part of training your brain to speed read is to understand that our brains naturally visualize what we're reading. This is so, so important. As if you're engaging with any text or information, you want to be thinking about it actively. For example, if I'm speed reading through a biology chapter on plant cells, I'm pulling out the key information about the cells and skipping the filler, but I'm still forming a mental image in my mind of what that plant cell or animal cell looks like and building context. Same with any business book. I might skim filler and identify an insightful point on sales, which my brain then will apply to my own sales practice. When you find some of these gold nuggets of information, you can absolutely slow things down if you feel you need to, and if you need more time to aid understanding. But hopefully, you've saved a ton of time by cutting out the rest of the filler already. Now, if you've read anything or tried to speed read, you know that it can be pretty tiring. And more importantly, it's easy to lose your place or burn out, meaning you need to go back to the start of a line or paragraph and this can lose time. I've also read some pretty hardcore books with very small text which can really stretch your eyesight, attention and your focus. My top tip here is to give yourself the best conditions possible to speed read. This might mean turning up the brightness on your Kindle or increasing the font style or size or making sure you're taking appropriate breaks. So now we've set ourselves up for success by rewiring our brains to not worry about completely comprehending every single word that we read and we know that it can get a bit tiring, 
Let's look at some techniques to help train our focus and our attention. The first speed reading technique that helped me to train my attention and focus was the pointer method, which is also commonly known as the hand pacing technique. Now, these all have names, but they're actually not that complicated. And in fact, this one you might have used before when you were younger or learning to read so that you didn't lose your place. Utah school teacher Evelyn Nielsen Wood was one of the pioneers of speed reading. And in the 1950s, she claimed that she could read at up to 2,700 words per minute if she swept a finger along the line as she read. To use the pointer method, all you have to do is run your index finger below the sentence you're going to read and across the page. You can also use a card to do this too. Just like in school, this method holds your attention and helps you visually associate words with their meanings right away and be more focused and intentional about the information you consume, preventing you from having to go back and reread text after losing your place. Your general focus and speed will improve as a result. The tracker and pacer method is similar to the pointer method. You highlight or track each line while holding a pen with a cap on, keeping your eye above the tip of the pen. Instead of your finger, you'll be using that pen tip. This will encourage you to read each line individually and much more quickly and help you to pay closer attention to the words. Try to read each line in no more than one second and then pick up the pace with each additional page. At first, you'll probably discover that you remember very little, but as your brain adjusts and you get a little bit more familiar with using this strategy, your comprehension will increase too. Another great technique that I'll regularly use to help hack and train my focus when speed reading is to listen to an audiobook on Audible while also reading the book itself. Kindle and Audible are both Amazon products and they integrate together. And listening while reading takes advantage of something called the modality effect, which is from some research into educational psychology that shows that our brains process visual and auditory information separately. Auditory items in our working memory do not compete with visual items in the same way that two visual things do. For example, a picture and a piece of text compete with one another and end up splitting our attention. This is known as the modality effect, where auditory and visual complement each other. I'll even up the narration speed on Audible and try and skim along in the text below to drive understanding while reading quickly. If I see or hear anything interesting, I might stop, visualize, or save the clip to come back to you later. If you look at the center of your computer screen, which is where the center of your eye is focused, you can still see and understand what's on the sides of the screen. Training your peripheral vision to work better can increase your reading speed by more than 300% according to research from Harvard University. Untrained readers spend about 25 to 50% of their time reading margins that don't have any content at all, and using up half of their peripheral vision to move from the first word to the last, and this is where training our eyes comes in. Focusing on blocks of words rather than individual words can help you to move more quickly across a page as well as avoiding sub-vocalization. If you have a book in front of you right now, try to relax your face and soften or extend your focus on the page you're looking at so that you no longer see words as isolated distinct units. Zoom out and your eyes will move faster over the page as you practice. Then, as you near the conclusion of a line, let your peripheral vision guide you to the final set of words. This will help to eliminate pauses in your reading, which typically occur at the end of sentences, and allow you to scan across and down to the following line faster. Let's look at scanning in a little bit more detail. Scanning involves moving your eyes quickly down the page often down the center, and identifying specific words and phrases as you go. These can be key sentences, which are often the first sentence of each paragraph, names, numbers, or trigger words or ideas. Learning to expand your peripheral vision can help with this method too. You won't read every single word, but your eye will land on what is important to allow you to grasp the basic idea as you scan. Basically, we want you to skim the text at first until a word or topic catches your attention. And this is all about reading in chunks. Most people can skim in 1.5 inch chunks, which, depending on the font size and type of text, usually comprises three to five words each. Rather than reading each word individually, move your eyes in a scanning motion, jumping from a chunk of three to five words to the next chunk of words. Take advantage of your peripheral vision again to speed up around the beginning and end of each line, focusing on blocks of words rather than just the first and last. Reading chunks of words involves reading sentences rather than reading the single words. The intention is to minimize the number of stops your eyes need to make when reading. Your comprehension rate and consequently your speed reading skills will significantly improve once you start reading in chunks. 
And the good news here is that your brain already groups things together to save time and energy. This frequently occurs throughout the day when reading signs, labels, brand names, or common phrases, as well as when following directions, suggestions, or instructions. Many of them are so familiar to us that we can't recognize each word individually, but can instead understand the meaning of the word group as a whole. So to bring these three speed reading techniques together, training your brain, your focus and attention, and your eyes, it's down to practicing. If you check out Tim Ferriss's blog or videos on speed reading or the hundreds and hundreds of speed reading courses out there, you can go down a pretty deep rabbit hole of recording your baseline speed reading time and then setting goals to improve this over repeated practice sessions. While I like the focus of this, it's probably a little bit overkill for most people who just want to get through the fluff of business books or textbooks a little bit faster so that they can focus on executing on the things that they learn, whether that's through self-testing for an exam or replying business ideas. Instead, what I'd suggest doing is grabbing an easy to read book with relatively large text or using your Kindle and block out any distractions. Then set yourself a goal to get through a certain number of pages as quickly as possible by grouping words together and using some of the techniques we've discussed today. This will give you some immediate feedback on how much faster you can get when you read using these simple tweaks and a few minutes practice. Overall, pace and comprehension must be balanced for effective speed reading. According to studies, reading quickly causes you to retain less information, especially when it comes to reading detailed specifics. Therefore, even if you are pressed for time, speed reading obviously isn't the best solution if you're reading a difficult legal or technical text. The same logic applies if you have to teach the content you're reading to someone else or need to learn really, really complex things. However, quick reading might be useful when you only need to comprehend the key takeaways like in a business book with lots and lots of fluff or to hack the encoding step of learning when you're reviewing things ahead of actually learning it. Now, I have some really great articles on how to improve your reading in general and the system that I use for remembering everything that I read. So do check out those videos in the end cards and do let me know about any other reading hacks that you might have in the comments down below. Thanks so much for watching and for subscribing. Do hit that subscribe bell if you haven't already done so and I'll catch you again next time.